In this video, I'm going to talk about why I started leaving matches in Naruto Storm Connections. Now, I've been playing the Naruto Storm series since Storm 2. I've played every game. I've been a very high-level top player in every single game. So, very interestingly enough, I've always advocated for not leaving, for not rage quitting. Not all leaving is rage quitting. That was a nice sidestep. But still, okay, there's a lot of things in this fight. I feel bad for this person because I can see that they're lagging. So I'm actually going to win the win the first round, have round advantage, and then I'm going to leave because I don't want them to lose BP because I can see it's a fake game for them. Now, I've actually left matches on them before where I was losing and I left. And it's not because I was losing or raging. It's because it was a fake fight where they had lag advantage. And I want a real fight. I don't mind if they beat me 20 times in a row as long as it's not lagging. So I'm going to do the same thing for them. And I'm gonna, I call it a skill quit. There's a lot of reasons you can skill quit. But you basically leave the match if you are advocating for real skill, right? And you can't move. Either you usually have a like a round advantage. But like for me, it's really like... I don't want to fight this fight because it's not worth my time. It doesn't mean anything, right? Even if I win, it's a fake win for me. So I don't want it. And I don't want to go have to go through not being able to move my character and not be able to fight back. Whether I'm getting destroyed because I can't fight back, I don't want that. And whether I'm getting a free win because my opponent is totally button locked, getting misinputs. Like I'm just, look what I'm doing to them. I'm just, it's just so easy. You know, that's why I have this in slow motion so you can see. They're, I'm just kind of walking around this person and the person is just, you know, the, earlier on there was a counter that happened and I they should have actually got the counter on me, but somehow that leg delay messed them up. And here, they're just kind of done. From this point on, they're just kind of done. They can't do anything. They can't fight back and they have leg disadvantage, right? And I mean, you can look at the fight over and over again, but... I know how this person moves. They're a very skilled, very good player, and I would love to fight them where we both don't have leg advantage, but there's no such thing as a rematch. Even though we've technically played three or four times, right, including this time, I have never actually played this person. I have never lost. I've never won against this person because it's all fake fights that I've had with this particular person. I don't know exactly why. I have my, my you know, kind of opinions or my uh, hypothesis. I have my theories. But let's go back to the question. Why I started leaving matches. So for 10 to 13 years, these games have been out. I've been playing them since Storm 2 came out on the PlayStation 3. I always played on the PlayStation. And I never left matches no, no matter how bad they got. Because, you know, I thought just tough it out. You know, don't be a bad person. Don't leave the match. But this has nothing to do with you being a rage quitter or you being a bad person. It has to do with the fact that Everyone is in their own little illusion, experiencing their own little game. And basically, most of your fights, sometimes even 95% of your fights on a bad day can be all fake, you know? Um, I think people will actually struggle to get about 30 to 57% of real fights, no matter how good their connection is. That's what I personally think. But as you can see here, I have a green check mark. So... After this point, 26,000, maybe it was 27, maybe it was 28, maybe it was 28.5 thousand, I started leaving, right? Because the other person, the current eye player, I I had a red one, right? So this one was green. So I'd say at this point, I probably in this game played about 4,000 fights, right? In total. And I probably left on four or five people or maybe six people or something like that out of the 4,000 fights in this game. Right. So I was doing it maybe one every 500 to a thousand fights. And it's just because maybe it was just so bad, right. That the other person was playing like offline, like a 10 out of 10 connection or a 9.5 out of 10 connection where they're playing like offline and they can move. And I was probably had like a three or something. And there's just no way that I can beat them. Even if I am much more skilled, it just lowers you down where it gives you a 70% handicap in that situation where anyone can beat you, even an average player, which sometimes I think they do this on purpose at this point, because I mean, maybe they just want it to be fair so that everyone wins or something. Or maybe they're doing something where they're, like, manipulating gambling addictions. You know, maybe that's the truth, right? Is that they know about this, but it it makes people keep wanting to play because it does something to their psych psyche and the psychology of the situation. Now, I also hated this, this fight against this guy. But anyways, 
Um, yeah, so I was always that guy. I even made videos and saying, you know, never leave, never rage quit. It's sad. But if you honestly like break down the fights and rewatch them, even frame by frame where people get certain advantages, there are certain things that happen. Like if a person is perfecting you, right, or perfecting you or perfecting you and they have four subs and you have none or vice versa, you have four subs and they have none. Are they, are they really that bad that they couldn't get one sub from you? Not even one sub out of four. Come on. You know that that is typically not always, but 90 something percent plus chance that the other person has leg advantage. Whiffing air combos, not being able to guard on the ground, dropping easy combos. Even Maybe that's why they made the combos so easy here, right? Is because people would drop combos all the time and it was really difficult to get those combos in Storm 4 and past games, right? Like here, this is all leg disadvantage for me here. This is an interesting fight because we both have leg disadvantage around the same. So we're both playing at like a 5 out of 10, like with half our frames. So we're playing at 50 frames per second, right, out of 30. And maybe it's dropping down to 10 as well. It's like fluctuating 10 to 15 frames out of 30, right, which is 33 to 50 percent of your frames. So it's interesting, right? Not being able to fight back is a bad thing, all this kind of stuff. So how did I make this change? I made this change because I know that the game is truly not competitive, right? If you play these games and if you participate in these games so i want actual skill that's why i call it a skill quit all right I, I created that term i created the spark not the spark dashing term i call it a super dash and i i called it that and i was the first person to use that online and to do a tutorial on, tutorial on it and to call it that over 10 years ago, I call it the super dash. You guys call it the spark dash. So if I labeled it that 10 years ago, but you guys, the, the earliest known date of someone calling something a spark dash is only two or three years old. Well, clearly there's a seven year gap there where I taught that to the community and I, and I labeled it a super dash. So it is a super dash. If you want to call it a spark dash, you can, but that's just, people are just crazy in this community. I don't understand people in this community. I really just don't understand people. But anyways, let's, let's not get off topic here. Why I started leaving matches is I actually really like this Minato after the patch because it takes a lot more skill to use. A lot of people just say, oh, you're just grab spamming or grab looping. That's not the only thing I'm doing. It's a lot more complex than that. His, you're basically playing a character that has two horrible jutsus. The Rasengan and the teletransportation technique does nothing. Especially in this leg, the guy just literally goes into Giant Awakening and destroys me. Giant Awakenings have always been a problem in these games because of the lack of stability online it's so easy even in storm 4 to pick some of those good giant awakenings right whatever the good ones are that you think you pick the good ones and you just mash and you just win it's not that there isn't technique but it's a severe advantage and disadvantage right it's an advantage to the person using it and disadvantage to the person who's experiencing the uh, leg disadvantage like if if there is equal leg and everyone's lagging fine but there's actually most of the time, one person is lagging more than the other in certain parts of the fight, right? And if that's the case, so if I'm playing at a 7 out of 10 or 70% frames and connection and reaction, and you're pay playing at a, you know, 9 out of 10, and then you giant awakening, a better example would be like, if I'm playing at like a 5 or 6 out of 10, right? Or 4 out of 10, something like that, and you're playing at a 7 or 8, and you giant awakening, you just win the game. Like it's like a 95% chance. Like you just win and I just get mashed to death. So I don't understand the skill in that. I just don't understand the skill in that. So I really dislike this. This guy started uh, super dashing or spark dashing, right? At the end, like three or four times in a row, something like that. And that's the other thing. If you use the super dash, one of those should have hit too. There's just so much delay. But anyways, one of if you use that at the end, right? Or if you use that at all in a game where the other person has leg disadvantage, you win. You're gaming the system, right? You're not playing skillfully. You're taking advantage of a situation of the game not having rollback netcode and the game having peer-to-peer -peer where there's packet loss and things are not being transferred properly. And you're, you know, people have trained themselves to only use leg resistant supports and characters and leg like even that i feel bad for the guy because that's all leg like he there's so many times in this video i didn't point it out but there's so many times in this video where this guy has leg disadvantage as well we have like equal leg disadvantage right where maybe at best we're playing at a six out of ten it, it's not it's worse see look at that look at the dashes you see the spark dashes and the, the super dashes you know it's like it's like crazy that i actually won that it really is i can't believe i won that 
But um, I remember being so stressed and just thinking that this was a toxic, horrible, despicable human being when I hate that. I hate that. I know that it's not true. I know he's not a bad person. He's using two man teams. He's using a fair two man team. That's not overpowered. He's doing so many things that are good. He's being a good person, but it's not his fault, but you cannot help but blame the other person. That's what everyone does. Everyone calls everyone a spammer, a runner, a blah, blah, whatever. You know, they call them every name under the sun. And it's so difficult that to participate in this community online because it just becomes so toxic and all of the root causes come back to the lack of a good online, stable online experience. Like, man, I keep telling you, I play Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2. There's literally 98% of the time, no problem. Like most of the games, smooth as silk, no problem. Like, just absolutely no problem. And I don't understand why we can't have that here. We probably would have to remake the game, like, from the ground up, and they're not willing to do that. Maybe it costs too much money. I really don't know what the issue is, like, why they don't do it. I really, really don't know. But for me, I started leaving for many different reasons. One of the reasons is I, I don't want to tolerate this anymore. I don't want to... I want to actually have good games. But it's kind of come to the point where I realized that most games are not good games and you just can't really get that. Unless you pick these like really strong characters and supports, right? Minato is oddly like leg resistant, but you're playing a character that can kind of just combo and grab. His Rasengan and his teleportation technique is useless. Like in a real fight, in a high level competitive fight, it is so situational, right? He went from being like the best character in the game or one of the best characters in the game where everyone was using him to now almost no one can use him at a high level. Very few people can, and I'm very happy that I'm able to. But if you go back, like, if let's kind of just talk about the supports for a second. If you guys don't know, go to my channel and check out No Support Minato, or, you know, for some of this about seven months ago, right, in 2023, where I literally, in the pre-patch, when everyone was complaining about the supports, I literally used Minato with no support. And yes, Minato was good enough to do that, but also this was one of the hardest, most difficult things, and I wasn't being cocky, I wasn't trying to rub it in people's faces. I was trying, you know, that I'm good and I'm so good. That's not the point of it. I was surprised that I was able to do that too. I went on like a 19 game win streak with no support pre-patch against skill-based matchmaking, people that were of my skill. I couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. Some of the most popular videos on the internet of connections, right? And it's interesting that I can personally tell you that Minato is nowhere near as good as he was before, okay? So it really takes a lot of skill and there's a certain way to play him now, okay? But that's what I'm trying to tell you about this. What I'm getting at is it. I really wanted to shoot my shot here at top 500 to get into top 500 and I wanted to get these competitive fights with all these players, but I hit a wall. Not because I started losing, not because... You know, I still win more than I than I lose, but all the losses I'm getting, literally all the losses, with with the exception of maybe about 10%, right? I have about 90% win rate to 100% win rate. All those losses are laggy losses. Guaranteed. It's insane. So it just, I got to a breaking point, right? Where I just thought, I cannot play these games unless they have rollback netcode. And I will start playing games that have rollback netcode. And if you just, if, you know, I don't want to, I want to play these games, but the game won't let you play it. The game really won't let you play it at a high level. I got intoxicated with this Minato post patch because he's so good with animation sequences and grabbing and resets. It's so good. So high level. No one has played like this before. I'm the first person to play like this at this level. And I really wanted to test and see, you know, how good am I? And I would love to get destroyed. I would love to be able to learn and adapt and to keep forward. But that's the thing. A lot of the people in this community, they beat you once, they one and done you. A lot of people in this community, they beat you once, they post it, they don't do sets, and they'll they'll just say, I beat this person, but they beat them in lag. Even I saw some videos of people getting to 99999 BP or whatever, 99,999 BP, right? And like the person can't, isn't fighting back. There's no way that that person in a skill-based matchmaking, when you have max BP, is that bad. He clearly has a leg disadvantage. And no one's talking about it. They're just saying, wow, you're so good. You're you're amazing. You got to 99,999 BP. Oh boy, come on. A lot of those people leave at the end too. 
they left at the end and it doesn't affect affect your smiley face or whatever right so i'm talking about leaving in the fight right not tolerating not creating bp inflation because bp inflation is created so if i okay with that first person if i beat that person and i know 100 percent, and we can all see right like most of us can see and understand but maybe some of us can't if i beat that first person and I took their BP and then I kept fighting them and I kept taking their BP because they have leg disadvantage for a certain amount of time or whatever. And say I got three games off of them, or at least this one game. That BP that I got, the 90 to 100 BP or whatever, 80 BP that I got times two or three, whatever, 200, 300 BP, right? It's it's literally fake BP. It's, it's BP inflation, right? So it's like creating the situation where I now took BP from this person that was vulnerable because I had leg advantage, right? And that they, people do this to me too. And people are doing this to everyone else. It just proves nothing. The whole point of the competitive is to actually have a balanced competitive, right? Where both people have a fair chance of winning, whatever, pick whatever characters you want. I don't care so much about the characters or supports or whatever. I care that people cannot fight back and that people, people are getting fake wins and fake losses and it just, I reached a breaking point with this game and I'm just sick and tired. I'm absolutely sick and tired of this nonsense. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all one bit. We need rollback netcode. We need to make a change. We need to stop asking for stupid things in surveys and ask for the number one thing that we all need, which is a good online experience. Because at least when you're playing with your friends, you'd be able to play, you know, forget competitive, right? You could go into custom matches and actually play with your friends and play with the people that you really want to play with. That is the most egregious, disgusting thing is that, look, not everyone is going to be a top 500 player, you know, like I am, or like a few select people are right. That not everyone is capable of doing that. Right. But we all have the ability to play at our own level, enjoy the enemy characters that we love and play with our friends in custom matches. But even in custom matches, this nonsense happens. Even in casual, a lot of times casual is more competitive than ranked. It's just it's just a complete mess. The Naruto Storm Connections in this Naruto game is just a complete and utter mess. You know, and it's just fake games everywhere. It's insane. And of course, when it does work, it's so fun. But you cannot... It affects your health, your physical, your mental, your spiritual health, and it wastes your time. You end up not even achieving or accomplishing anything real. It just wastes, complete waste of your time. You know, um, this peer-to-peer -peer system that we've had online instead of having rollback netcode, right? And I don't know what to tell you guys, but this is a big problem. I know I keep making videos like this, but I need to keep making them until everyone starts repeating it, saying it, and telling the developers and Bandai Namco of this, we deserve so much better. We deserve, you know, not to get cyberbullied online. There's people that have hurt themselves because of the cyberbullying. I, I have confessions here of people saying that. There's a lot of people that stop playing, that private their messages, that, that don't, you know, that create privacy settings so no one can ever message them because everyone bullies everyone. And it's not because of the people. It's what the netcode does to the people, it turns them into people that they're not, people that they don't want to be. It turns them into monsters and it makes a fool out of us and everybody else that plays this game. It's absolutely horrendous and it's horrible. This is not how an anime game or anime community should be, especially about Naruto. It should be about love, peace, understanding, friendship, and conquering, you know, coming together to conquer evils and bad things and the, uh, things of this nature right? It should not be about everyone actually submitting to the demon fox and becoming a demon fox and being taken over by demon fox and then every village in the world gets destroyed by a bijou, right? A tailed beast, right? Like, it should not be like that where people get, you know, overtaken by the tailed beast and they lose their mind, body, soul, their essence and their humanity. This game literally destroys other people's humanity and turns people against each other and it's all because of this leg that's where it starts of course you know i don't know that's why a lot of people just don't play this game anymore they only play offline it is what it is